Big Daddy here with another video in the series of customizing KDE Plasma 5. So we're deep in the inner workings of KDE, deep in the system settings, over halfway through. And this wallpaper looks pretty familiar. I don't know where, but I've seen it before. Oh well, let's dive right in. So in the last video, we got through personalization and I said that I was going to talk about network. Well, I guess we got to talk about network then. But there really isn't a whole lot in here because all of these settings here that you see are all for the Conqueror browser. And they don't affect your regular Firefox, Chromium, any of those browsers in any way. So we're going to skip over this like it wasn't even there because for the three people that are still using Conqueror they'll have to watch another video so connectivity has you can enter your username and your default password for your Windows share system but most people I know set it up through other ways including Samba and they don't use this here they don't set it through here Bluetooth there is devices and you can add a new device. There is adapters where you can name it and you can show whether it's hidden or always visible. And the advanced setting settings, settings, the advanced settings. Hmm, it's weird. Um, you can enable Bluetooth integration, which you can disable it from here. Uh, you can receive files from remote devices, which I would think that would be the one of the only reasons why you'd use it and you can show it where to save the files itself. You can also check whether to automatically accept files on a trusted device or all devices. So that's it, that's all you got. All right, so we got time to move on to hardware. So if you have a specific keyboard model where you have multimedia keys that are not working properly, you can come in here and see if your model is in here and click it to see if you get an extra uh, like say for example I have a Logitech G15 keyboard so when I hit apply basically all that does is try to allow me to use the other media keys on the keyboard because it knows what setup it is never really noticed any difference when I did that so I usually leave it on the generic keyboard because most of the time my Logitech uh, peripherals work out of the box and just a little side note on the Logitech peripherals they make awesome stuff okay their their keyboard has my G15 has I bought it years ago and when it first came out and it's still running now it's old and the backlighting is orange and it's fading. Either it's fading or my eyes are getting older. <laughs> but it still works great. I would like to upgrade sometime to a newer one just to, just for the backlighting purpose. But for the keyboard itself, it still works flawlessly. So I'm going to move on. So the number locks on Plasma Startup. Now that only turns it on I turn those on it's usually leave unchanged I turn it on but that only turns it on after you log in if you remember in the enable number locks on boot up video if you watch that one and I will put a link in the description but this only puts it on after you log in if you would like the number locks on at the login screen when you boot up you would have to follow the instructions in that video so the keyboard repeat is something that I don't use because like I said my Logitech keyboard works out of the box without me having to do anything with it alright and the same goes with the layouts if you would like to come in here and mess with this that's fine but uh, I have not done anything with this because if if something isn't broke you don't fix it right okay all right, in the advanced, you can configure keyboard options. Advanced, and I do mean really, really advanced. The really only the re really the only the only reason you would need to come in here is because if you need a specific setting, 
so specific that you drill down to something like you want to change a certain key to another spot or most people are not going to need anything in here. Um, you either, let's put it this way, you either need something in here and you're smart enough to edit the config files or you don't need anything in here. That's pretty much the two camps that we're in here. Moving on to the mouse, um, you can change it from right to left-handed and you can reverse the scroll direction. So I believe it was known, and I don't remember exactly, don't quote me 100%, but I believe it was known when I installed it, I noticed that the scrolling was backwards, at least to me anyway. Um, so when I wanted to go down in the browser, I would have to scroll. When I wanted to scroll down in the browser, I would have to push forward on the scroll mouse, which seemed to be the exact opposite of everywhere else that I've used the scroll wheel. And I was like, wow. So I didn't get into the deep settings of how to fix it or change it, or there may be even a setting to change it, but I just noticed that it was backwards. So if you like to go backwards, you can do that in KDE. You can also change the double click, single click option, uh, but you can do that in Dolphin. And if you'll take notice that most settings in KDE have multiple places to get to them. So you can get to this setting through the Dolphin file manager, which is where I usually change it. And like I said, it's multiple spots for the same exact setting. In advanced, uh, you can change your pointer acceleration if you like. I don't really like to change that because Again, my Logitech mouse has uh, different DPI settings on it. So if I want it to go faster, I just change the DPI on it and not mess with the settings. Because when you mess with the settings, obviously you take the risk of it not working the way you want it to. But I do change the mouse wheel scroll lines. Now, in KDE, especially in Dolphin, I noticed uh, when I'm looking for a wallpaper or something, I'll, if I full screen it and I have a certain amount of items in the screen itself, then when I scroll, it actually scrolls one line past the next line. So I actually miss a whole line when I'm scrolling. So I change this to two lines so that it, that doesn't happen. That's the only thing I change in here. So keyboard navigation, if you would like to change that, use, this is for using the number pad. So I don't know too many people that do that, but I guess if you have a certain setup that you can't, uh, or the mouse isn't working for you, you can change it in here. Um, the joystick is for, you know, obviously calibrating a joystick or a controller. I used to have a Logitech controller that I calibrated the D, D uh, the, not the D-pad, the uh, stick on it itself. And uh, this is where you would do that. I don't have it anymore, so... A touchpad, this is where you would change the touchpad settings. Now, I'm not going to go through this because... I'm not an expert on touchpad because I've never had one. So you probably would need to find somebody who actually has a touchpad in order to maybe help with the settings themselves. But I've never had one, so I've never can't come in here and used anything. So, All right. So the next, I think we'll cover display and monitor, and maybe that'll be it. All right. So in here, you have your two monitor screens. Now, in the days of old... <laughs> In the days of old, in the days of old, you used to have to edit the config files and state exactly where you wanted the primary monitor to start and end and give the X, Y coordinates for the secondary monitor where it was going to start and end. And now we have this pretty little GUI program that does it for you. Isn't that great? All right. So I have my 24 inch monitor to the left. And I have my 32 inch monitor to the right. This is my primary monitor, the 32 inch. Now, the reason that one is shorter than the other is because the 24 inch is 1900 by 1200 and the 32 inch is 1900 by 1080. So if they were the same resolution, then they would be squared with each other. So I like to have the top squared and then the little leftover at the bottom gets in the way less. Uh, but if you had your monitors on different sides, you could change this around, hit apply, and then the monitor would be, depending on which side you have your monitor on, is where you're going to put it. All right, so I'm going to change mine back. And you see the little blue line here. I'm clicked on that one. That enable allows you to change the settings for that monitor. So you can enable it, 
change the resolution, change the orientation of it. Um, you can scale the output or you can unify the outputs. Now, if you click on this one, then obviously you're going to change the settings on that. So if you had, for example, my HP monitor turns all the way around, so you could change the orientation of this if you're if you needed something like this for work or it worked better for you you're actually able to do that and turn your monitor that direction so it may not be something that everybody uses but the more settings you have the more options you have which is a good thing more options is a good thing um, and then the only other thing you can do is change the primary output all right in the compositor so the compositor gets very detailed okay and you can change the animation speed from instant to very slow which obviously changes the effects but there are so many opinions on which is the best best method to change these settings to and what accomplishes and a whole reason of doing stuff like this in here is to prevent screen tearing and screen tearing and I didn't notice it before but screen tearing can be a big issue on KDE um, so now I have not since I installed this and making these videos I have not come in here and tested settings out because you need to do quite thorough testing on which one you're gonna use because you gotta apply it run some videos even you may should probably even log out and log back in just to make sure your settings are uh, taking full effect and um, you'll have a hundred different opinions on which one is better okay so you're I would suggest you do some testing on your own now there will be people who will say uh, crisp is the best and then if you do crisp then you have to do full screen repaints but as you can see there's even a message that pops up that says full screen repaints can cause performance problems so um, all I'm saying is if you're having video issues and you have messed with these settings this is probably the first culprit that I would check to put back to the defaults and see if that fixes your problems because there are a lot of issues that arise from changing the compositor from its default and um, the second thing would probably be the desktop effects making you know taking some of them off or putting them back to the defaults but if you're having issues probably this is the first place I would check you can change it from OpenGL 3.1, 2.0, or use the default X render. Um, and like I said, you can do full screen repaints. I don't exactly understand every single option here. So, like I said, I have in the past, I have just messed with them, tried different ones, and found the one that worked well. And what worked well in KDE 4 or older KDE versions doesn't necessarily work well in the newer ones just so you know um, you can enable color correction but that is experimental and I don't think I would want to do that <laughs> and uh, that's about it so you can enable it or you can disable it and obviously if you disable it you won't have any effects whatsoever so that's up to you if you don't mind that your system will probably be faster for it but you know I don't want to go I, I, I'm in the middle. I don't need 100,000 effects. I don't use 100,000 effects. But I do like the operating system, the desktop environment, to look nice. And uh, the compositor does allow that to happen. So I'm just leaving it on default for now. Off to Gamma. So um, in here, I would definitely recommend you change the settings in your monitor first. Because when you start changing items in here and you then go to your monitor they're going to be affected by what you did in here so I would start with your monitor settings the color correction the gamma settings in your monitor and then if it's not good enough then you can come in here and do this well you can do whatever you want it's your computer I mean geez but that's what I would suggest so the general rule of thumb is to have this black line barely visible now not blended together but you it's definitely you can definitely see it at least I can I don't know if it'll show on the video but I can definitely see it's barely visible there uh, you can also change the scaling 
um, to go to RGB or dark gray. You would change these if you were like playing games and you were needed to look in dark places. And, you know, so if you need that, it's there as an option. So I think that covers everything in display and monitor. And that'll wrap it up for this video. So in the next video, maybe we'll continue on hardware and maybe even finish. But until then, Big Daddy out.